Hey, 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 everyone. I am slowly growing rich with data center REITs. Data center REITs own and manage facilities that allow companies to securely store and distribute data. Basically, every company uses a computer, and all of that data is powered and backed on a server somewhere. This type of infrastructure is needed as a cornerstone for any company regardless of sector. The stock I'll be talking about in depth today is Equinix, ticker symbol EQIX. I'll also be going over one of their competitors in the data center REIT industry. I'll first go over a breakdown of the business model, and then we'll look at the financials, and then of course the favorite part, the dividends. Equinix is a huge international presence located in 26 countries for a total of 210 data centers that serve a wide clientele of nearly 10,000 customers. Some of these customers would include, I don't know, um, just all the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Oracle, Verizon, and some of the ones that are super popular right now as we're working from home include Zoom and Salesforce. When you have people working from home during this current pandemic or now having to take online classes, a data center REIT really starts to shine here. Somebody has to be powering all that. Business is slowly becoming more and more digital. This is real-time interactions between people in different locations, and all of this needs to be connected some way. But at the same time, that data needs to be secure, as cybersecurity breaches can be very costly in more ways than just one. They also need to meet regulations, as Equinix does business all over the world. Companies need to be able to deploy data storage lawfully among many different jurisdictions using networks and clouds. Now, I won't bore you with all the details, but just know that they do connect information for businesses globally. Feel free to check out their 10K. This has way more detail in the industry as well as industry jargon uh, that I just can't cover in this short video. Looking at its segments, the bulk of revenues come from co-location, which is companies paying Equinix for a vacation for their colons. Okay, no, just kidding. But co-location is basically businesses renting space for their servers and other computer hardware. And Equinix will be providing the building, the power, the bandwidth, the security as we previously mentioned, and cooling. If you've ever actually been inside one of these data centers, it gets really hot in there. So adequate cooling is needed. So companies can access these servers remotely, even though they are miles away. The data center is secure and it has a disaster recovery program. A company might want to do business with Equinix if the cost of renting is cheaper than hosting their own server, where they'd have to pay for hosting of office space, all the energy that's involved, the labor, etc. Especially for a small business, this is just not the best use of their time or money setting up their own data center, and they can just use Equinix as a third party. Equinix will do all the design, the installation of the racks, the power circuits, the fans, they'll do all of that work for you. And that's how they make most of their money. Long story short, they're basically just renting out their data centers for other companies. And this is a company that is just continuing to rapidly expand, adding new data center facilities in Brazil, Australia, Singapore, and Florida all within this past year. Their second leading segment is interconnection, which is basically the networking of two or more different data centers to achieve business or IT objectives. This can be done if a company had information on multiple data centers, if they wanted to share info maybe with a partner company, if they maybe wanted to pool their resources together, or they wanted to use one of the other sites as a disaster recovery site. So that's really just a bare bones overview of their business model. I tried to keep this as simple as possible because we just want to know how the stock can make us money at the end of the day. But you don't need to have a data center in your house to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It takes me a lot of time to research and make these videos. So that's actually the best way you can help me out. And that lets me know if you really like these videos or not. For 17 straight quarters now, Equinix has grown its revenues and that's exactly what we want to see in a company. This is like getting a hybrid of a tech company and a real estate company as it is set up as a real estate investment trust or a REIT. Looking closer at its financials, we'll compare it to its next closest competitor, Digital Reality Trust. Make sure you don't say reality. 
And as far as I know, I researched this heavily. There's no relation to ticker symbol O, Realty Income. And as we're gonna see, there really just isn't much of a fight between these two companies. Equinix is the bigger company at the time of this recording, having a $58 billion market cap compared to DLR's $38 billion. And don't let Equinix's near $700 stock price intimidate you. Stock price actually doesn't really matter, it's the market cap that determines how big a company is. For example, the technology company Intel trades for around $60, but is actually five times bigger than Equinix with a market cap of $250 billion. I like to see a company have a decent amount of cash on hand. That means it can meet its financial obligations with easy liquidity. Equinix has a good standing of around $2 billion on hand, while DLR only has $90 million. That is really low, and that's actually quite concerning in times like this. That would be a pretty big red flag if I was thinking of investing in them further. The debt to equity ratio will show us the percent of the company using financing that comes from creditors and investors versus wholly owned. A decent ratio is around 1 to 1.5, but that's going to depend on the industry. Here, it looks like both of them are just fine. Current ratio will give us an indication if a firm has enough resources to meet its short-term obligations. Usually you want to see a ratio around 1.2 and 2, that's pretty solid. Again, DLR really struggles here, and Equinix is doing just okay. Although Equinix's revenues growth is spectacular, it has consistently been rising in long-term debt, and that's a bit concerning. It went from $5.5 billion in 2015 to $12.3 billion by the end of 2019. That's an increase of 123% in just five years. Funds from operations is important, as we can't just use net income to see how profitable REITs are. This is because they depreciate assets as an expense, even though the expense isn't really costing them anything. And actually, most real estate tends to go up in time. So for our funds from operations, we'll add back depreciation expense. Both of these companies have grown quite well over the last five years. Now the part that you really want to know about is those sweet, sweet dividends. While DLR might have a higher starting yield right now, you're going to see that's quite irrelevant in just a second. While Equinix has been paying dividends for many years, it's only been consistently raising them for 4 years compared to DLR's impressive 15. Therefore, a 5-year growth rate isn't possible for Equinix, though they both have a decent 3-year growth rate. When we look at the total return over a 10-year span, let's say we've owned this stock since 2010, and during that time span, we've been reinvesting the dividends, both Equinix and DLR actually outperformed the S&P 500, which returned 202% over the last 10 years, or 11.68%. DLR returned 288% over the last 10 years, or 14.5% compounded annually every year since 2010. But it was easily no match for Equinix, which would have given you an amazing 715% return or 23.3% annual return. Now, that isn't just good, that is phenomenal. You could have easily became a millionaire with Equinix had you invested in them at just the right time with the right amount. But then again, I guess you can say that about just about any company. Overall, I think there is plenty of money to be made in the data center REITs. They should continue to expand their businesses, as every company is going to need access to servers. It has great international presence, and I think this industry is very recession-proof. Companies aren't just going to be able to cut their servers like that. Otherwise, they're going to have a whole lot of other problems. If you guys are thinking about buying data center REITs, be sure to let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like that video and subscribe to the channel as I'm constantly trying to pump out videos for you guys.